Hi readers, it's Lori. Welcome back to my channel, Books Inc. and Paper. And this is a mid, almost mid-month uh, book check-in. It's not quite the middle of October. And I'm taking a bit of a turn, my TBR, and uh, I'm going to talk about this unpopular opinion possibly before I tell you about what I'm replacing this novel with. But I am halfway through and have decided to DNF the Stand by Stephen King. It surprises me too. <laughs> I have really been um, diligent in reading this. Again, I'm halfway through and today is, um, I'm not sure what today is when I'm filming this, around the 10th or 11th or so of the month of October. Uh, yeah, it, it is just not something I want to spend any more time on. And I'm surprised by this because several of my friends from high school, my friends on Goodreads, my friends on Facebook and Instagram love this novel. It's one of their favorites of all time. And I anticipated that I was also going to love it. And I really don't. I really have been plagued by this book. <laughs> in ways I didn't expect. I've read it on ebook and I have listened to it and I have walked every day and listened to it. And every day I think, do I care what happens to these people? How much do I care about what happens to these people? And that's the problem is I'm not just, I'm just not loving it. So the premise of this book is, and I'm realizing now I got the, I started this last year. I also started another novel last year and I kind of got those confused a little bit. And I thought there was a detective in this one with a small child and that's another whole book, but I'll talk about that in November. <laughs> but um, I, so it follows a virus that hits the world and kills people almost instantly, very, very quickly, very severe virus. I thought it would be scary because, you know, here we are in coronavirus time, right? So I thought, oh, this is going to be like a really creepy read. I enjoyed the beginning virus part more for sure. And then we got to the part where the people that have survived the virus decide what to do now, what to do next and where to go. And that's where I'm getting really bogged down. And I only like two, really, of the characters enough to have kind of been curious about what happens to them. <laughs> so there's that. I think it's a lot more words than it needs to be. And I am reading, my daughter said, maybe if you read the cut version, which is the one that was first released, you would not be having so much trouble. And that may be true. I am reading the uncut version, which is... Oh, I don't know, 1,100, 1,200, 1,300 pages. I don't know. It's a lot. I actually physically went to the library, reserved a copy of it, picked it up, because I thought we were going to have a storm coming to, toward us again. It missed us. Sadly, it went to Lake Charles, Louisiana again, and I'm really sad for them and really thinking about all of them and figuring out what we can do here to support them. But um, it did not come here. But I even went and got a physical copy of it because I thought, what if I can't listen on my phone and I can't read on my iPad without having electricity? You know, I, w I was really planning on finishing this, you guys. And uh, no, it's just not in me. So I'm telling you, I'm pretty sure I'm going to DNF it. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to pick it up again. Mm. And I'm, I mean, I could change my mind. I own it on ebook, but I don't know. I just don't know that I will. But for now, I'm replacing it. And I wanted to show you what I'm replacing it with. So while I was at the library, I found this. Ooh, Blair. Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay. Now I have kind of a thing about Paul Tremblay. I loved the novel that I read first by him, which was called A Head Full of Ghosts. And then I read The Cabin at the End of the World last October, no, last August, and didn't like it 
much at all. And I was even in a cabin reading it and thought, oh, this will be perfect. It's all scoop, spooky. It happens in a cabin. Mm, I just not like that one at all. But this one was on the new shelf at my library when I went in there the other day. And uh, so listen to this. I didn't even realize. I knew he had a novel coming out, but I didn't realize it was out. In a matter of weeks, Massachusetts has been overrun by an insidious virus that is spread by saliva. Like rabies, the infection causes confusion, loss of inhibition, terrible hallucinations, and gives rise to hydrophobia and aversion to water. Weird, right? But unlike rabies, the disease has a terrifyingly short incubation period of an hour or less. Those infected, both animals and humans, quickly lose their minds, are driven to bite and infect as many others as they can before they die or are killed. All right, I'll give it a shot. What can I lose? Shorter. I think I can add it in this month and finish it. Obviously, I only have two weeks to read it. It does have an interesting um, sort of like that some of the pages are, are like dirty. It looks like it'll be a fast read because some of these are text. Um, I'm not sure why it's all kind of laid out like this, but uh, I kind of like it and I think that I'm going to enjoy it. So again, I am going to swap out the stand for this. I'm going to carry on with the rest of the books that are on my TBR for October, which are The House on the Strand, The Last Town by Blake Crouch, and what was what else was on? Oh, One by One by Ruth Ware, which I actually did just start, uh, really just at the beginning of it, but have just begun to take uh, a look at that. And I actually also have that on script, so I can listen to it while I walk. I can replace the stand with The Last Town and One by One, and maybe Survivor Song. I haven't even looked to see if I have access to that on any audio opportunities. But I would love to hear from any of you who love The Stand, and I'm open to you convincing me to carry on, <laughs> but again, I'm halfway through, and I just don't know how much more of this I can take. <laughs> I really don't. It needs to really pick up for me in order for me to pick it back up and, and want to read it. So convince me that I'm wrong and I might give it a shot. But for now, I'm definitely taking a break. I want something that will pull me forward a little bit more quickly. And now this could, again, be me. It could be that I am in a space where I really need things to be a wild ride and a quick, fast paced plot. I admit that I'm much more addicted to those things now in my life than I was when I was younger. I gave things a lot more effort when I was younger. It could be that I'm in a slump part of the novel and you'll tell me that it's going to really carry me through real soon. Um, it could just be that it's not for me and that's okay. I'm happy that people love it. I'm happy that it's a successful uh, novel by Stephen King, one of, one of his most acclaimed, I think. I'm just not quite there. All right, guys, thanks for listening to my sort of book chat update today. I would, again, love to see kind of how you're doing with your October reads and, and whether or not you read any of these and enjoyed them. And as always, happy reading. Bye. Cheers. And bye. <laughs>